I'm Wendy Gillette with Small Cap Nation. I'm joined today by Mark Emmelfarb, who's the CEO of Dyadic International and also the founder, and Michael Kramer, who is the founder of Mott Capital. So first of all, Mark, tell me a little bit about your business. Uh, thanks, Wendy. It's very nice to be here. Dyadic International has developed a method how to produce biologic vaccines and drugs quicker, faster, and cheaper. And so we can bring more affordable medicines to a greater number of patients. And you had an interesting background. Tell me a little bit about how you started initially in business. Well, we started off in actually the jeans, blue jean business, uh, selling pumice stone to Levi, Guess, Wrangler, et cetera. And we evolved from there to starting to sell enzymes. That's how we jumped into biotechnology. And then we spent the last 20 years developing a method how to make proteins at very, very large scale, at very low cost, at very high yields. And we're taking that technology that we developed for the industrial world, which we just sold off the industrial business to DuPont for $75 million on December 31st. Congratulations. To, thank you very much. <laughs> and we have approximately $70 plus million uh, available to us today between cash and, and cash coming in the next several months to take this technology and leverage it and bring it into the pharmaceutical industry where they produce very low quantities, high quality, at a very high cost. So we're gonna change the paradigm in the way drugs are developed and produced. So where do you see the company going in the next two, five years? I think in the next two to three years that we will have enough data and we'll be able to demonstrate the things we did on the industrial side where we made enzymes of stonewashed genes to basically feed animals, make animal feed more nutritious and healthier. And we actually turned corn into sugar to make biofuels to get off oil. Mm -hmm. So we succeeded on the industrial side, which is what attracted DuPont to buy that technology. And we want to now work on making vaccines not only cheaper, but we want to make them better so that we can create more immune response so that actually they work better in your body. And then also make biologic drugs. The generic drug business is chemistry. And when you do chemistry, you actually need two plus two always equals four. In the biologic world of, of biogenerics, biosimilars that are coming, you have to go through a cell line. And we've created a super cell line that produces large vines below cost proteins and proteins are drugs like insulin, uh, Embrel, EPO, those are the multi-billion dollar biologics that are very expensive and unaffordable. And although they may be affordable through our healthcare system, and even that's questionable because we're going broke here as a healthcare system because of these biologic drugs and to a great extent, as they make up 21% of the total drugs being used today and, and that's growing. And the third world can't afford these at all, so there's no access. So not only do we want to make it more affordable so the healthcare system can actually operate efficiently, but we can bring these drugs to the third world and globally and make people that are suffering through rheumatoid arthritis actually have treatments for disease. So that would be your eventual goal. Right. And the good thing is we spent the last 20 years creating this technology for the industrial side of the business, mm -hmm. industrial biotech, and with the advances in synthetic genomics, biology, synthetic biology, and biotech, we believe that that's all matured and growing faster than Moore's Law grew for the Moore's Law grew for the computer industry, and between our growth and advancements in our science and our platform, and, and the growth in synthetic genomics and all the sequencing of the human genome and the sequencing of all the living things on Earth, that we can take that information that that we've gathered because we've sequenced the genome of this particular organism, and we can put all that together and actually solve those problems. All right, Michael, I know you've been listening very carefully and closely. That's yes. a lot to absorb, but you do have some questions. Sure. So why don't you try to explain to us like what the next stage is? You've obviously were very successful in producing this industrial product that DuPont bought for $75 million. How do you get from where you were with, with the industrial side of the business into growing it and creating a revenue stream for the, bio, uh, the biopharmaceutical vaccine business? So what we did on the industrial side, we're going to duplicate on the pharmaceutical side. And what we did is we developed our own products. We advance them. In some cases, we were capable of launching something like that we'll, we'll do that. But here, we're not going to bring them to the marketplace. You know, we don't have that expertise. We're not regulatory people. We're not drug developers. We're really good at making proteins at large scale cheap. And that's what we're going to focus on. So we'll do that and bring, like, insulin. We're working, insulin's a $28 billion drug today, growing to $40 billion by 2018 or 2019. We've initiated an internal project to develop insulin and see if our system can actually make it more efficiently and more effectively. And if we can, we'll find a partner then to take it through regulatory and launch it from, from a market perspective. In addition to that, there's a growing number of biologic drugs out there coming off patent. And people are looking to produce biogeneric versions of that. And we're gonna hopefully bring a, a much simpler, 
easier way to do it quicker for less cost and, and a faster time so that you know you can actually help the healthcare system be affordable and bring it to more people. And so we're going to look for, for sort of licensees, which is we had BASF, one of the largest chemical companies in the world, was a licensee of ours on the industrial side. Amangoa, one of the most successful biofuel alternative energy companies, was a licensee of ours on the industrial side. And then ultimately DuPont purchased it because they see the benefits it can bring to them. And so we're working with Sanofi Pasteur already, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies, on a vaccine. And we announced in October last year that the vaccine we made using our technology, not only could we make it cheaper, it seemed to be equal immune response or even potentially better. Mm -hmm. And so what's happened in the biologic space is that people are looking for new methods, new ways to bring drugs to the market for less so we can treat more people more affordably and get more access to more patients. So Sanofi is one example. The other example is we have a government-funded program called ZAPI in the EU. And what ZAPI is, it's a 22 million euro vaccine program where they're trying to, you know, if we had Ebola break out, one of the problems we have here is even if you can make Ebola and a vaccine, can you make it fast enough? Mm -hmm. And even worse, the existing technologies can treat just a few people. So because this is scalable at such a large size, we can actually treat more people and actually save more lives on, on pandemics or epidemics. And so this ZEPI program is working on zoonic diseases, which are diseases transferred from animals to humans, and they want a faster way to do it, and they want to do it in larger volumes at lower cost. You certainly have a lot to <laughs> <laughs> plan for the next few years. Thanks so much, Mark and Michael, for joining us today. Great. Thank you for having me. Uh -huh.